2002, uh, so 2003, this yep. whole G unit stuff coming, and then you get into it with the the athletic uh, director. Yeah, that was previous. Right? Yep. Right. So, do you feel that he actually had it purposely out for you when this? Because it seemed like it was like real tedious, like it was like payback because you were out of line saying that they he didn't let you. Go. Yeah, they go didn't on. let you go to the funeral. And now you have this attitude now, still slash gangster, right? Attitude, yes. right? And they won't let you go see your boy that passed away. That got yeah, so it became like, so in this time, this is, he's viewing me as you should be a subordinate. You should be in line with anything that we say. So when you call me a liar on national TV, you're like disrespecting my reputation. And if anybody knows anything in this world as an adult, when you're a 60 year old man, the last thing you want somebody to do is like question your reputation, mm. especially the young black kid on your football team who you have ultimate control over. So by this time, I think he started the, um, I want to call it the riff. And, and if I look back on it, we both were probably irresponsible. He probably was, he probably said, hey man, I took it too far. I would probably say, yo, I was out of line with a lot of stuff. But no, nonetheless, you have two egos going at each other, right? Mm. So you got two egos going at each other. He comes back in and he presses the issue with the NCAA and I get the investigation. So when the investigation happens, um, he's like full fledged on their side. But what he probably felt like is that, you know, we've got the national championship. We have the ability now to recruit more people, our programmers in a prominent space, and we don't necessarily need you. You know what I'm saying? Thank we can, you, thank you, Claret. We don't need you anymore. Yeah, yeah we don't yeah. need you. Right. And so, but then also you gotta ask, what is he doing? Now he's trying to embarrass me. You know what I'm saying? So mm. when you get to NCAA, you get violations, you get scrutinized, you get criticized. This is a public shaming and embarrassment on you as you did to me a few months back. And so now we both are in our own way. And like, like that, that's passive aggressive behavior. Mm. Instead of just coming to me and say, hey man, I was a little bit silly what you did. You cause this commotion to the end, you know, uh, and, and I'm not blaming on him because I was out of line for what I was doing, what accepting illegal benefits and so on and so forth. And so that's what ended up happening. And, um, and the NCAA investigation happened and they said, suspended me. But would that have been brought up, uh, uh, the investigation for the um, for receiving that, if you didn't say what you said? About no, never, because, never, it never, no, no. It would have never been brought up because... Because that was, you already done that. Now yes. you want to go out there and see your friend at his if the funeral. Yes. So that, that, would, that would have never, we would have never been here it had that not happened. You know what I'm saying? And so it just came down to, you know, you disrespect my reputation. And so I have, I have a, a feeling towards that. And so that's literally where the stuff comes from. Right. Jim Brown got involved. Yeah. That was deep. Yes. Jim Brown called him a slave master, especially, you know, called this bullshit. He went out. Yes. It, Do you think that actually even made it even like now it's a little more heightened now? Yeah, so, uh, and I, I don't blame Jim Brown because you, you have to go how, you, you, you're talking about 60-something-year-old Jim Brown. Mm. You're talking about somebody who lived through multiple eras. You know what I'm saying? You're talking about somebody who, you know, the older you get, the more willing you are to call things for what they are. You know what I'm saying? And um, Jim Brown wasn't in the process of, or, or he, he wasn't in the mode of, um, you know, let me be, let me come and deal with this with kid gloves. I'm coming to call this what this is. I'm gonna call it what it is. And then that became an, an ego and a pissing match between them two. Right. And, you and know. Jim Brown is like the God of Ohio. A hundred percent. He the God of Ohio. He's the God of the Cleveland Browns. And even, you know, when he was pushing that American movement, he was the God of like helping criminals uh, adjust back to society That's after right. they were getting out of jail. I don't even call them criminals, guys return home from, uh, from, from prisons. And so, you know, he was, um, you, you know, when, when you deal with more harsh people or harsh realities, you don't really have the, the luxury of towing around stuff. You could just like, man, this is what it is. And so, you know, they took offense to that. And, um, you know, I think they were just dealing with something that they didn't want to deal with. And the easiest way to deal with or to get rid of something or, or not deal with it is just to get rid of it. And that I became part of like that, man, let me just get all this stuff out of here and let's keep on moving on. How did you feel when Jim Brown did that? When he said, called him a slave master, did you know it was like, this might be over for me? Like, oh, no, even this is 18, 19 year old Maurice. I didn't even know that that was offensive. Like, so even when I called the, the athletic director a liar, you have to think, I don't know proper etiquette with media. Man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, I come from a culture where guys are grown at 13, 14, 15 years old. A dude, no matter what you do, will call you. A liar, call you wrong, whatever. You know, you don't, you don't have right. this, 
you don't you don't have the 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 soft skills or the um or, or the training to say yo I, I can't say this to this person and and so sometimes that's how you may see young guys who disrespect people but they don't know that they're disrespecting people just because that's them that, that's them <laughs> that's you know how what they saying? brought up the environment yeah. but, but until you get experience and then you can look back and say yo i was you know i was out of line with that that's the nature of it Andy Geiger is the uh, one he called the slave master. Did you ever speak back to him? Speak to him after? No, and, and even though I want, even modern day, I would want to talk to him uh, today. And, and, and the nature of the conversation wouldn't be about me. The nature of the conversation is how do you assist in helping other situations like this from happening? You know, you was an athletic director for all these years. Like, who was right, who was wrong with me and him don't even matter. It's done sport, already. Right? It's done already, right? And so, you know, you've been an athletic director. How do you view this now that it's over? You know, do you think athletes uh, should be treated different? Do you think they should have more resources as players? And I'm, a, I'm just at a place in my life where I, I'm, I'm having so much good stuff happen. And um, I, I do the right thing with what I do. That I would rather have that conversation to see how we can assist these guys rather than you know, any other nonsense. So no harsh feelings. Oh, no, no. I mean, just like, e even this, like, like at the end of the day, he's a, he, however he was brought up through the Ivy League structure, he's still a man, and his feelings or his views on the world are based on his experiences. You know what I'm saying? And so you disrespect somebody, or you feel, or, or you feel like you're being disrespected, you have an opinion on it. You know what I'm saying? And, and boom, that's what happens. You know, that you, you react a certain way. Just as me, I was brought up different, and I had my perspective or reactions on it, and, you know, we both look back and say, yo, we probably shouldn't have did that. Right. 